Hey, this is Paul the Grind Lord, and this is my review of Hiss. This is Hiss by Wormrot. It was released uh, July 8th, 2022, and on Eric Records. Yes, Eric Records still makes Grindcore. Go figure. Uh, so, this is their fourth studio album, and it is also their last to feature uh, their, vo their vocalist, uh, Arif. Uh, he announced uh, earlier this year. I want to say a couple months before this album came out that he was going to take a step back as the vocalist for Wormrot and move forward as a family man with uh, their manager Azine who is also leaving uh, her position so I'm just gonna get started album of the year I know it's it, it's really weird to start off this channel at with album of the year but that's just how this coincided. I have been listening to this since I want to say I got this shipped pretty early. It came to me, I want to say, two days before release, and I have yet to listen to anything else. This album is absolutely like it's mind blowing. It's sh it has shattered everything, every concept I've known about grindcore and what it should be and how it's formed and how and how basically how angry and how uh, emotionally charged it can be so with this album um, first thing I'm going to talk about is how it starts this album starts off with if you you really have to hear this so you got to turn up the volume and you can hear what it, you think is silence but it's actually very very low water movement and then around the 30 second mark it kicks in and it kicks in at high gear to the point where if you if you think there's something wrong with your with your copy of it you think there's oh well what's going on with this or you think you know something wrong with the video or your streaming yeah uh wait 30 seconds and it's gonna hit you and it's gonna hit you hard and I've seen I've seen some people say like it scared the absolute shit out of them, which it does. So that's how the album opens. And then other thing I'm going to talk about uh, I want I want to talk about is right in the middle, uh, in between uh, Voiceless Choir and Grieve. That's when you would flip the album, and those two those two songs coincide with Grieve being uh, an instrumental, a nice like kickback to how to the atmosphere of this album and then at the end of glass shards the closing to this album is what sounds like the water shifting again now why do they do that in my opinion i think it's because they want you to constantly flip this album over and over and over again this is an, a non-stop loop of atmosphere no matter what you do no matter where you start this album that atmosphere is there and it's quite brilliant how they do it it really just kind of it you are there you are there for this album they're not taking you anywhere that they don't want you to take that they don't want you to bring you to which is kind of cool uh, so this album uh, is basically a fan for it's a should be a favorite for anybody who's into anything you can be into grindcore this whole thing is just steeped in grindcore you could be a fan of death metal and it's got some death metal riffs in there you're a fan of uh atmospheric black metal hell there's a uh, there's tremolo style riffs in here there's shrieking there's you know the atmosphere so basically take your pick and there's even some slow parts in there for the doom guys so take your pick they they got there they got you covered even the hardcore guys you know you got some hardcore moving riffs and then on top of that there's game vocals you know take your take your fucking pick this album has everything for you uh, another thing I want to talk about is Eris vocals Eris vocals uh, when they put out their song uh, behind closed doors it scared me a little bit because Arif had blown out his chords before this album that's part of the reason why it took six years to make this album. And this album is a primal example of quality over quantity. But back to his vocal styles. Uh, when I first heard that, 
the first 10 seconds of Behind Closed Doors scares you because you're just like, is this what Air sounds like now because he blew out his chords? No, it's just another style. He's just adapted. And then right after that little part, he kicks it, he kicks it into his high shrieking, very fast grindcore paced vocals. And you're just like, oh, okay, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm never doubting you again. So it's pretty cool that he can still do that and he can still adapt his voice, uh, which goes into Broken Maze, the second track off of this album. The awesome thing is he kind of adapts the Barney Greenway uh, style of doing clean vocals, which is very Gregorian chant, very low baritone uh, style vo vocals, which is also kind of reminiscent of Fear Factory if you're a fan of that. Uh, so it's pretty cool that he can do all that and then you kind of look for another chance to hear that on the album and you don't. It is the only song to feature that, so kind of shut your trap, you know, about no clean singing in, grindcore, meh, 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 meh. Yeah, fuck you, all right? That it's only one song on this fucking album. And the best thing about it is it's only that one song because each song has its own identity. There are There's something different they do in every track which kind of it proves that these tracks aren't there for just lengthwise you know it's a 33 minute album and for grindcore guys you gotta fill out a uh, time for for a grindcore album sometimes it means more tracks sometimes it means you gotta have longer tracks with worm rot they don't really have to make longer songs unless they want to it's a 21 track album and each track has its own identity that is the best thing you can say about this album is every song is different you know a lot of cliche grindcore bands that's what all they'll do is they'll just play fast they'll shriek and that's the end of the track there's not much to it but when a band comes along and actually does something different and wants to do something different every track you really fucking listen okay uh voices their previous album I thought was already like that was their benchmark album that's the album they're gonna be known for yeah fuck that they're gonna be known for this album hiss is absolutely uh pretty much it's gonna be an essential album for grindcore i don't know how else to say that it's essential to me it's gonna be essential whenever i uh tell people about grindcore and how they can and how they can easily have something accessible this album is accessible doesn't stop it being absolutely demolishing doesn't stop it from being you know have steeped amount of passion in every note and every cadence from Arif and every lyric it doesn't stop that and the mix is absolutely brilliant but it's not good it's essential now it proves that grindcore can be well recorded it also proves that it doesn't have to be, you know, straight up true grind every second of every song. It just proves they have something different to do. They're evolving. Nobody gives Napalm Death any shit for evolving. They give them constant praise. So why is every band in Grindcore kind of afraid of doing that? I don't know, but, you know, now with Worm Rot, I'm gonna be looking for that and it's kind of ruined other grindcore bands for me and that sucks because <laughs> I absolutely love grindcore and you know I love I love going on an hour car ride and I can listen to about 200 grindcore songs that's fucking amazing but it also yeah, it puts the bar up here and that's what you that's what some artists do they want to raise the bar they want to put out something that they're extremely proud of and to be honest every single member should be very proud of this album uh rajesh or vijesh vijesh uh vijesh is absolutely this is his benchmark album he joined the band uh right before they recorded voices so voices was his first uh outing with the band he did awesome on voices and he continues to raise the bar on this album by the way look at this art this art is absolutely amazing also proves that you don't have to be black and white art all the time in grindcore or collage art you can have actual art 
you can have you can use actual colors and what's also very amazing about this album it's not just the three of them uh, they did put in a violin arrangement on some of these songs and on voiceless choir is Voice, voiceless choir grieve uh, Weeping Willow, Glass Shards, those are the songs that have it and that use it very well. Glass Shards, uh, they use it instead of like a, a grandiose solo played by the guitar at the end. Instead, they're just like, fuck you, you're getting violin. And it, <laughs> it raises uh, your emotional value. It enhances the sorrow that's in some of these lyrics. Uh, Arif uh, posted on Instagram saying that uh, if you pay attention to this album, the last line, the last line of this, of the last song on this album uh, will really connect with why he's leaving. The last word is never, the last word is and never reminisce. Never reminisce, which means you know, we wish him the best luck all the world, but we shouldn't reminisce on old worm rot. We should keep looking forward to what they're going to do. Pretty fucking sweet, all right? Uh, this album is definitely album of the year for me. I don't see anybody else beating it. Uh, the closest contender I've had so far has been uh, Noel's new album, and even then, I'll review that when I get a copy of it. But this is a 10 out of 10 for me. I, this is essential. This is amazing. This is what I'm going to be recommending for the next year, year and a half until something else blows my mind, which I don't see anything else blowing my mind anytime soon. So with that, this is Grind Lord and fucking hell, this album killed me. <laughs> Bye.